Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. Today I have three books that I wanted to share with you. I'm really excited about these books. If you've ever watched Trey Smith and his God in a Nutshell channel on YouTube, you know what an eccentric genius he is. And if you have not watched his channel, I will leave a link in the description box so that you can. And I'm going to admit that the first time that I watched his channel, I thought, wow, this is really bizarre. But when you actually pay attention and when you actually see the way that he puts things together, it's amazing. So when he mentioned that he, had, that he was selling books, I wanted to get into it right away and order them because not only because it's written by Trey Smith, but because I saw him flip through them in some of his videos and they just look beautiful. And I'm actually going to be using these with my high school students. So the three books that I'm gonna be going, going over with you today are Pre-Flood, Nimrod, and Exodus. So let's get started. So the first book that I'm going to be sharing with you is the pre-flood book. I just figured because it was in chronological order then, but I'm not going to show you every single page and every single book, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what his books are like. So it says the true history of your world, a fully illustrated explanation of time, science, pre-flood and Enoch by Trey Smith. And here is the back of the book in a world of lies. The truth is a valuable thing. Pre-flood is an easy journey into the beginning of our world and the origin of reality. So if you open it up, you will see right away that the pictures are, why is this sticking? One of my kids, I bet you dumped something on it already. <laughs> anyway, the pictures are beautiful. They're colorful. Here we have the table of contents for this book. So it's the paradox of reality, a global flood or evolution, missing links and lies, time, the anomalies everywhere, man, angels, and devils, legends of the flood, the Noah project. And here we start with chapter one. And so we're just gonna do a quick page through just so that you can see what to expect from this book. And he delves so deeply into everything and he makes things so interesting and like i mentioned in the intro he really is a genius and you can tell that he has a mathematical background i believe that his father's a mathematician and you can tell that some of that rubbed off on him he's so meticulous with everything and i'm actually going to be using this as a read aloud with my high schooler. I, I, well, I keep saying two high schoolers. I keep forgetting that I'm actually going to have three this year, but we're going to do this. I asked if they wanted to read this to themselves or do a read aloud and they opted for a read aloud. And I'm glad because that way I can read it right along with them. And I'm going to say right away that I don't agree with everything that he has to say about space. That's the one area that I think that he might have overlooked when it comes to um, reading the Bible literally. But even with that, these books are so well worth getting. So in the pre-flood book, he, he does talk about the Nephilim. He talks about flood legends, the garden of the gods. Um, he does get into some of the extra biblical texts like Enoch and Jasher. Global flood, the death of their world is lighting yours. The boat of Noah. He talks about how all the animals could fit on Noah's Ark. Um, if you saw back in the other photos that I was showing you, he gets into the Nephilim and the fact that they are not the sons of Seth, like so many mainstream Christian churches will tell us, but they were something else. And we have evidence of that. So that is here actually let me just find that that photo just so that i can explain to you what i'm talking about here actually is a a photo of a, a man a human foot and a dinosaur foot in the same geological layer 
Now, I know that there are some people who do not believe that dinosaurs were real. Um, I think that a lot of people will tell you that dinosaurs were what the Bible is referring to as dragons. But I'm not going to get into that because I didn't really study that all too much. But anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't see where, where that picture of the Nephilim was. But there we go. So these, a lot of these skulls, the elongated skulls, are found in Paracas, Peru. They're found all over the world. But, yeah, he gets a lot into this. And he was, the very first video that I ever watched by him, whoops, was called, it was about the Nephilim. Sorry, now that I made you dizzy because I kicked the tripod. But anyway, and it says here, uh, the very first video that I watched, that's what I was saying, was it was called the Nephilim. And I had been searching it on YouTube. This was years ago, and that's how I came across his channel. And it says, you have many unexplained things on this planet, such as bodies that do not fit the norm. Your Bible and Enoch are describing a very strange pre-flood world with bleed overs into modern history. These strange things are found at occult sites in Peru. Now here, this is from the book of Jude, even the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Jude 1 6 and it says this word oikaterion has a dual meaning it is saying these beings traded their higher level heavenly bodies for three-dimensional temporal bodies of flesh the text says they bred strange children so the next one is Nimrod in the Tower of Babel it says turn the cover the true history of the world Nimrod, when the kingship was lowered from heaven, the kingship was in Eridu. And that was from the Sumerian Kings List. And so the Tower of Babel is also known as the Ziggurat of Eridu. The base of the Tower of Babel, seen to the right, is roughly 25 acres or 20 football fields. The city expanded outwards for miles. It was located right next door to Nimrod's occult cities of Uruk and Ur. Only the base remains. This tower was dedicated to the Enki. It was called the Gateway for the God. And let's just take a look through this. So the table of contents in this is bloodlines, the two trees, light and darkness, Tower of Babel, signs, the War of Noah, and Merkar, and the Lord of Arada, Abraham, and I happen to know that the Lord of Arada is referring to Noah. He was known as the Lord of Ararat, but they, they say Arada. Abraham and the fire of Nimrod. I learned that on a Trey Smith video, of course. Um, Abraham and the fire of Nimrod. Abraham, the fight of faith. And let's just start again, paging through so you can see what there is. So here's Noah, the ancient timeline. Here's ancient Mesopotamia over here. He also gets into the Nephilim here too. It says Nephilim after the flood. So in the other book, it talked about the pre-flood Nephilim, but the book of Genesis tells us that there were giants or Nephilim on the earth in those days and also after that. So after the flood, there were Nephilim. He gets into that also. Noah's Ark, the raven, the dove. He talks about the bloodlines of Noah with Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He gets into Gilgamesh and Enkidu, Pan Enkidu, I don't know how to say all of these names, so I'm not even going to try, um, but he, he talks about how they are connected and how um, even though we don't believe that all of these ancient texts um, faith-wise are correct. We do know that there is truth to be found in everything, and it's, it just seems that a lot of these ancient texts validate the things that are in the Bible and in the extra-biblical texts. And as you can see, this gets pretty extensively into the book of Jasher. I have never read the book of Jasher myself. The War of Noah, and Merkar, and the Lord of Arada. Abraham and the fire of Nimrod is the name of that chapter. So that's this one. There's the descent line of Shem, ruins of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
Okay, so the last one that we have to go through is just the ex So the last one is Exodus, the truth. Exodus, the most unusual presentation of the Exodus in the world, the real Joseph, the real Pharaoh of the Exodus, the real Osiris, the real gods of the plagues, the real everything. He gets into the stuff that most Christians won't touch with a 10-foot pole. Table of contents is Osiris, Abraham, Babylon, and Egypt, Egyptus from Osiris to the Exodus, Joseph in Egyptian history, Hyksos, the kings of Avaris, Exodus, the Pharaoh, the plagues and gods, the waters part. And here we are still in Jasher, and here it talks about Osiris and the birth of the God of the dead. And he actually shows that Osiris was a person, not a God. The prophecy of slavery. Shem, the descent line. He talks about that again. He talks about the significance of the Eye of Horus and all of the occult meanings behind it. So yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm saving this for my, for my teens, the ones that, who would be in high school. Plague Zero, the serpent. Joseph in Egyptian history. Here's the step pyramid of Djoser. And what he actually shows is that he believes that Joseph from the Bible, um, the, one, the one Old Testament Joseph is actually known as Emotep in Egypt. And he goes over why that is. Actually right here's a nice chart. So I'll just show this with, to you quickly because I think this is really interesting. But So here's Joseph and here's Emotep, according to the Torah the, or the Bible, according to the Egyptians. So Joseph died at 110 years old, so did Emotep, was made second to Pharaoh, so was Emotep, was foreigner from another land, so not an Egyptian, so was Emotep. He has a tomb, but his body was taken out of Egypt, same as Emotep. Interpreted dreams, as he did, became a physician, same. Saved Egypt from seven-year famine, also. Served the God of the universe, whom, when Moses was at the burning bush, said, Tell them my name is I Am. And Emotep served a God different than that of the Egyptians. The name Emotep is really a royal title, meaning, speaks for the God I Am. So, very interesting. Gets into Tutmosis. Tutmosis, the missing body. That sounds very interesting. I haven't read these books yet. I just got them the other day. I will probably wait until I read them with the kids. I, I mean, I will look through them, but I'm not going to sit and read all of them first because I want to. I want it to be my, you know, first experience reading them as well. Anyway, um, three days of darkness, the last plague, the waters part, the Red Sea, the obelisk. So, I mean, if you are a believer who likes to get a little bit deeper into the, the things in the Bible and the historical time period, I think these are definitely the book for you, unless you tend to shy away from um, learning about how a lot of these other religions, they, they have some of the same stories in them as what do come up in the Bible. And that really is found just like the, the flood legend is worldwide. The, just as in Genesis 6, it talks about the sons of God having children with the daughters of men. And in other religions, it talks about gods having, you know, demigods, children with humans. So a lot of these stories are the same. So I think that we can actually look at these things. We might not say, oh, well, I'm going to start becoming, you know, a member of the Zoroastrian religion. That doesn't mean that you have to do that. But I think that you do get a broader um, view of the things that were going on in that time. And I think that it really helps to give more context when learning these things.
So I hope that this gave you a good view of the three books. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.